Hey, hey, welcome back on this Tuesday. Hope uh, you're staying dry. Uh, appreciate you being with us here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Of course, Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News and the Big Ten Network with us. Uh, and uh, Mike, uh, this weekend, uh, Zach Eady would get the opportunity to lead Purdue to the promised land for the Boilers. Uh, a national championship is something that they have not won, and but they've already broken down one barrier, having reached the Final Four for the first time in 44 years. Very cool scene with Zach Eady. First of all, it's a very funny scene of him cutting the net, just standing on the ground. And I'm like, that's that's amazing. That's uh, okay. that that yes. <laughs> but uh, handing the piece of net to. Uh, Gene Katie, which it's that that's a pretty cool thing to see. Uh, I was I happened to be listening to the radio broadcast on the way I was driving, so I was listening to Robbie Hummel, uh, and, and Robbie's going to be with us here today. But uh, okay. he he got emotional, um, and and normally in in media that's not allowed, but sometimes things are just allowed. Uh, and Robbie is such a pro that. Uh, it's actually it was great to see, and no, most of all, I, I, you have to be happy for Matt Painter. I, I know Indiana fans are like, "Nope, no, you don't," and 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 trust me, I get that. I'm with you. If I was a fan, if if I was looking at it from a fan standpoint, I'd be the same way. I, I'm when I was a fan or was able to be a fan of things. I'm Larry Bird, baby. Nope, where are no friends. Nope, we're not friends until this deal is over, which I loved it. There is nobody who has lived that more than him. He was the most uh, no friend guy on the court, and now he's all buddy buddy with everybody. Uh, it just cracks me up. But I was watching Blue Chips yesterday. Man, Shaq, that young Shaq, he was something. Um, he couldn't shoot a free throw, but damn, he could. He could take the ball up the floor. Uh, he could. He he was a mobile, gigantic big man. Oh, he was amazing. I, I remember the first time I saw him. Um, uh, I was. Uh, was it in Algiers, the, Louisiana? No, I saw him. He was he was in the Dapper Dan uh, All Star Game in Pittsburgh. This had been, I think, eighty nine, and I was covering it for the Pittsburgh Press, and uh, they they were practicing at the community college. And to get to the community college, you walked up a like a ramp and then turned the corner into the gym. And I remember I walked up and I turned the corner, I opened the door, and I said, "That must be Shaq because he was just immense." Uh, and that was when he was still uh, before he got uh, really big. Uh, he was lean and uh, and dynamic, and he was phenomenal, uh, just a phenomenal basketball player. And then I remember in that year's McDonald's game, I believe. Uh, he, he actually went coast to coast with the ball. Uh, he grabbed the rebound and took it coast to coast. He, he was, he was just an absolute stud as a basketball player. Uh, and later on he got, uh, heavier, not, I'm, you know, not, I'm not, I'm not using that as a pejorative. He got heavier. Beef. He got some beef on him. Yeah. Beefier. Yes. And I will, t I, I remember I was in the locker room in, uh, the palace of Auburn Hills. Uh, they played an exhibition game, the U S uh, Olympic team played an exhibition game against a college all-star team that included Tim Duncan. Uh, and that was when I came to realize how great Tim Duncan was when he played against those guys. Uh, and I was in the locker room and, and like Shaq was sitting there and it, I'd never seen a bigger human. I mean, until maybe Zach, uh, he, everything on him was huge. His hands, his feet, uh, just, just an enormous human. And, and, and he was a, Tremendous player and and really uh, really pleasant to be around. <clears throat> yeah, it's just amazing. But and I want to talk about the comparison between the, the players like Jabbar and Walton and Oscar Robertson, Ralph Sampson, and Edie. Why they didn't put up quite the type of numbers that Edie has. Uh, I think there's a lot of differences because of the the, the, the era of the game, uh, who they were playing with. For uh, Shaq, it's probably who he was playing for, Dale Brown. Uh, but uh, because, uh, like Shaq, there's no way that uh, if I saw him and Edie play, he's going to kill Edie. 
um, it, just because he's so athletic. He was freakishly big and freakishly athletic. It's it, he was a you know a once in a generation type player. But why did they not have grab the attention quite the way Edie has? Oh, I, I, I don't know why you'd say they didn't. Um, I well, mean, no, I mean it just seems like Edie is. It just really, uh, maybe it's, and maybe it's because of the time era when we, we are people or in media or, or putting people up more, maybe I, I don't know because, you know, you didn't have the social media stuff back then and all of that. So I'm sure that plays a big part of it. Well, I mean, I, 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 I Kareem, uh, when he was in high school was the most famous high school player in America when he was recruited. I mean, everybody, uh, in the country was aware of him who followed those sorts of things. Uh, he was, and, and when he went to UCLA, it was a big deal. Uh, I, 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 I think that, uh, you know, what's, what's different with Zach compared to, um, to, to the prior superstars, uh, Oscar, uh, then, you know, uh, Kareem, um, uh, Bill Walton. What's different now is that all those guys came into college basketball. I mean, Oscar here with Christmas Addicts, I mean, it was well known that this was an extraordinary player. Uh, with, as I mentioned with Kareem, um, there was no secret there that he was going to be really special. Ralph Sampson, I mean, you know, uh, it was one of the biggest recruiting battles ever. And these guys all became great college players. With Zach, it's totally different. He's the one guy that's now in that sentence a uh, multiple player of the year award winner who was not a sensation coming out of high school. Uh, he was not even really noticed. I mean, 400th in his class and uh, not a ton of uh, scholarship offers. When he arrived at Purdue, it was not a big, big deal. When he played his freshman year at Purdue, it was not a huge deal. It wasn't really until the year between his <laughs> the summer between his sophomore, his freshman and sophomore year, that it became apparent how really special he could be. And I do wonder if, if Travion Williams had not been in place on the uh, 2022 team, no, no offense to Travion who had a great career and a great year, but if he was not in place, would Zach have happened sooner? Would Zach have become a all big 10 player at least his, his sophomore year, maybe even more, maybe a, you know, a fringe all American before he later became the best player in the country. What you know? How much did that dynamic limit Zach's impact early in his career? Uh, I I I suspect that Zach could have been a, a first team All Big Ten player as a sophomore uh, if Trey were not there. And again, they were probably better because Trey was there. It's, it's again, it's not a. I'm just saying in terms of the dynamic of what was possible uh, for Zach, uh, the fact that they already had an incumbent center probably held him back from becoming extraordinary sooner but it i think it's a really cool story and, and a really cool modern college basketball story that we could have met you know developed uh, in in college an all-time great college player I, and there's no way around the fact that he is an all-time great college player you win multiple player national player of the year awards uh and and you look at the list of guys who've done that um, it, 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 you're in that group now. I mean, you may not be like, if I did my book on the top hundred college players again, like today, um, I mean, he may not, you know, I had Ralph 30 something, um, uh, because I thought that even though he was exceptional, that his impact was muted, maybe by the rules, maybe by the way he was deployed, whatever his impact was muted. Now, Jay Billis will tell me I'm crazy. And he has. Um, it, because he played against Ralph and it was like a nightmare. Uh, but, <laughs> but his impact wasn't what it might have been. Uh, so I, I think, I think that, uh, you know, the game changes, but Zach would certainly be in the top half of that hundred greatest college players list. No doubt. Uh, like I said, how high I'd say probably inside the top 30, top 35 easy. And, you know, and he could, you know, Hey, if they get through, the next two games, you know, he's shooting up the top 25 level. <clears throat> Definitely uh, has the opportunity to take uh, Purdue places they've never been uh, this weekend. What are – UConn has been kind of – I was very surprised at the 
earlier in the season that they weren't number one for weeks and weeks. And I'm like, UConn's the best team in the country. Why? It, it took them a while to reach that number one spot, uh, which matters nothing. It was just, I, I just noticed it and thought it was kind of weird. But now that we've had the season, they're going, they're rolling. They're destroying teams that are playing really well. Illinois is a, was a, is a good team. Just absolutely dismantled them. Um, it, it's it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see the job that Danny Hurley has jo- done replacing 75% of his offense. Uh, I, I don't know how you do that. I mean, what I do in this day and age, but it, nobody else did that as successfully as he did. Uh, and so that's wild. But, man, they have so many ways to hurt you. And that's – and they have some guy named Donovan Klingon. So <laughs> that ain't that ain't too bad. Yeah, I I I I think that's the most underreported part of this UConn thing. Uh I t- I wrote about that in my piece about the their attempt to repeat as national champion, that they lost 75% of their scoring from last season's team. And it, it, you know, this is, you know, not just guys, but Andre. Jackson uh, was terrific last year. I mean, just a, an absolute warrior leader guy that you'd want on your team every day. Adama Sanogo, who was uh, all first team all Big East uh, and made three threes in the championship game. Jordan Hawkins, who was a lottery pick by the Wizards. Uh, uh, they had great talent, and they got better when those guys left. I mean – it, it, they're they're a they're a more dominant team this year than they were a year ago. Uh, I I I think that's just staggeringly good. It's why we named Danny Hurley National Coach of the Year because they were able to do all of that. Uh, it, it was it, it's been an amazing coaching performance and and an underrated one because there are people who aren't giving it to him because well I guess you know they were they're the reigning champions but it's not the same team. That that is dominating now as as won the title a year ago, and uh, it's not going to be just Zach Eady against Donovan McClingan, but that is going to be a heavily anticipated matchup. If it happens, yes, uh, it will be very interesting to see how that goes because this will be maybe the first time this season that Zach has gone against a player who is more his size. Uh, who is, I mean, he may have played against a body that big, but not a, a player like him. Uh, Klingon's legit. He's going to be an NBA guy like Zach will. Uh, and so to, to face somebody who's 7'1", 7'2", who's mobile uh, and, and a really outstanding defensive player, uh, it'll be interesting if indeed it happens. I'm not taking anything for granted because they're both in for difficult games, at least from the jump. I mean, we look at that Illinois game now and it looks like it was a blowout and it was in the end, but for a half, it was very competitive and Illinois did a really nice job of being competitive in that game in the first half, even though they didn't play exceptionally well, but they let it get away from them. So, you know, it's up to Alabama to not let it get away. (laughs) And then of course, Purdue versus NC state. You can't, you can't count NC state out of any game right now when they've beaten Duke, when they've beaten Carolina, uh, when they've gone on the run that they have, you can't count them out of any game. Uh, you have to believe that they have a, a significant chance to win. Absolutely. And uh, looking forward to that. Um, there's just been, this is just rumors and all that in, in regards to Clemson and, and Florida state, with the issues they're having with their ACC and people say, Oh, they're joining the big 10. I don't know that I see that happening, even if they were to get out of the ACC. Uh, I, I don't know what they would bring to the Big Ten. With the, football-wise, it would be huge. But they, they do not add any television market, but they bring television star power. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that that's necessarily something that uh, uh, that will be desirable at this point. Um, I don't know that there's another – I mean, you're talking about – ballpark and this is just wrong like another 140 150 million that uh that the rights holder would have to kick out there to take both of them or half of that to take either of them i don't know whether there's that much money in them i don't i i, I remember uh washington and oregon are coming in at half share 
uh, for however many years, four years, five years, whatever the term is, maybe it's three. I don't, I don't remember now. Um, but they're coming in at a half share. And if Clemson and uh, Florida state got all that trouble and pay all these legal fees and whatever, uh, withdrawal fee they'll have to pay if they do win um and then and then get a half share they're basically where they are now uh that just seems like a lot of trouble to go through for oregon and washington it was different because the pac-12 was crumbling uh and and was not you know was not about to get a significant tv deal so i i i i don't know whether that there's the appeal there um i, I don't i i suspect not uh but we'll see i i i I, I have been wrong before only because I didn't realize how absolutely botched the Pac-12. I thought the Pac-12 was going to survive uh, because I thought there was enough money in it for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, they there was. They turned it down. Uh, so uh, I, I, I think there's, there's the possibility that it could happen. Do I think there are schools in the ACC that the Big Ten would like to have? Yes. I just don't think those are the two. Uh, and so I, and, and they, yeah, I, I've, I've read some legal stuff and saw, saw an interview on a podcast with a, with a, with a, uh, a, an attorney who doesn't think that they have really a case, uh, that, that doesn't believe that, uh, that either Clemson or Florida state has a case against. It's going to be really hard. I mean, I mean they've, if signed, signed like they've, signed it, they've signed it like three different times. Yeah. I, I don't know how you say, well, things changed. Well, that's the nature of the world. That's why contracts exist. Can they get out of it? Yeah, but they'll have to pay more than it's worth to get out of it. Yeah, the conference has put themselves in no uh, good favors. Man, uh, enjoy yourself out in the desert this week as Mike will be out in Phoenix for the NCAA Final Four. So I uh, hope you enjoy that. We look forward to talking to you next week and after – See where the chips fall, baby. You bet, Jim. Thanks. You got a prediction? Ah, uh, if I have to predict, I will say that I think we'll see UConn play uh, Purdue on Monday. But I, like I said, I'm not taking anything for granted. I think both. I think you always have a shot. I do think that 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 uh, that Connecticut's extraordinary. Um, I think Purdue is better than NC State by a fair uh, amount, but. They have to prove it on the floor as they did Sunday when I thought Tennessee is a much better team than NC State, even NC State in this iteration, uh, and and they were able to get through that one. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle of Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Thank you for enjoying our content and videos, and make sure you hit that subscribe and notifications toggle so you don't miss out on anything, whether it's Indiana Hoosiers, the Boilers, the Colts, the Pacers, Indiana High School action, whatever is happening in sports, we're trying to bring it all to you and make sure you don't miss out on a thing. Again, hit the subscribe button for us. Helps us out a ton. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much.